You may have heard the phrase, it's common in education, mental health, and social services today. The phrase is trauma-informed. If you have children in school, their teachers are probably trained for trauma-informed educational practices. Doctors and other health providers are learning to recognize the signs of trauma whenever they're treating patients. And mental health uh, practitioners are assessing for trauma on a regular basis whenever they're working with clients. A couple decades ago, the term PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, became part of our conscious awareness. PTSD was first talked about in terms of veterans returning from war. Now, we had known for generations that some people who returned from war had some symptoms related to anxiety. We talked about shell shock or combat fatigue. But in time, we came to understand that a result of trauma was that some people are unable to reintegrate the traumatic experience. And that was first recognized with veterans. And we began to understand that this happens for people who experience any kind of significant trauma in their lives. Now, this is important to be aware of. When we experience a traumatic event in our life, it is normal to have certain kinds of reactions as we're sorting it out. We're going to be anxious. We may have difficulty sleeping. We'll have intrusive bad dreams. We'll be on edge. But when those symptoms don't dissipate, when they don't fade away after about three months, and particularly if they get worse, that's a sign that something isn't right and that a mental health practitioner is, is needed. Many people aren't aware of that, including many professionals. That three month marker is really very important because our normal response is to be anxious. It is to have trouble sleeping because something bad happened to us that was significant. So that's normal. But today I want to talk about trauma itself, not traumatic disorders. I want to talk about our normal experience of trauma and what it's like for us. So now's a great time to like this video, to subscribe, and to click the uh, bell so that you're notified of future videos. Trauma can happen and does happen to all of us. You could be driving down a freeway and all of a sudden find yourself in a multi-car car pile up. Or you could be walking down the street enjoying your day and suddenly there is gunshot and people are scurrying to find safety and a place to hide. You could be sitting at home watching TV or reading a book and suddenly your front door is kicked in for a home invasion. Those are all traumatic events. Trauma also occurs to us when we live through a uh, natural disaster like a tornado or hurricane or, or wildfire. Trauma is also part of domestic abuse. Trauma is part of many aspects of our life that go awry when things suddenly change or in prolonged periods of distress like in war or in poverty. So trauma is around us. And trauma impacts us in a way that we have a sense of loss of security. We find that something's taken away from us, that our sense of secure orientation to the way things should be is gone, and we're not sure if it can be that way again. So an aspect of the trauma experience is loss and bereavement. Now, I have another video called Loss, Bereavement, and Grief. And if you're not familiar with bereavement, I suggest watching that to get some framework around loss and bereavement. But as you watch that in relation to trauma, think about trauma rather than the death of a loved one. The process is, is sort of similar, although there are some unique features related to trauma, which I'm gonna continue discussing. But in trauma, what we lose is that sense of security and normalcy in life. And we're not sure that we'll ever get it back. 
We typically think of trauma as something happening to an individual, and it does. But trauma also happens to groups, to communities, and even to a country. For example, 20 years ago, on September 11th, planes flew into the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and another one was downed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. September 11th was a traumatic event. It wasn't just traumatic to the people in New York City or in Washington or the people on the airplane, Flight 93. No, it was traumatic for the country and for people around the world. It shocked us. We weren't sure if life would be the same again. Traumatic events happen at other times that impact communities. When the mass shooting happened at Sandy Hook Elementary School, parents around the country weren't sure that their children could ever be safe again in their schools. When the mass shooting happened at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, LGBTQ people around the country were on heightened awareness because it was clear that simply being out and about and living your life wasn't safe. Anytime a police officer shoots and kills an unarmed black man in the United States, that trauma is, impacts the entire African-American community. Trauma is individual and it's communal, it's both. And today we live with a high sense of trauma because of the things that are happening to us. In addition to being individual and communal, trauma is transmitted from one generation to another. We know this based on neurological research. Among Native American people, there are neurological changes that happen because of trauma. The traumatic event happened generations ago with genocide and forced removal. But Native American people carry markers of that trauma and the related mental health issues to trauma. It's not just that they tell the stories of the trauma and have a corporate memory, but that the trauma has changed the way their brain operates. This same thing is found among some Jewish families, families who had a survivor from the, Aush from the Nazi concentration camps, Auschwitz and the other camps. For those survivors of the Holocaust, the trauma was so intense that it's passed from generation to generation. So trauma impacts us communally, and it also is transmitted from generation to generation. So how do we live with that trauma? And trauma is happening all around us, traumatic events. I think part of what we need to do is recognize that the trauma is present that it's there and that we need to move through it. Trauma needs to be recognized in order for us to grasp where a solution will be for us. And we don't recognize it, we don't admit it's there. Instead, we pull back and try to deaden the feelings that we have because of trauma. We shrink into our own cocoons, as it were. Sometimes people do that through drinking and drugs and, and other substances. Other times it's through binge watching TV or playing video games excessively. All of these things pull us out of reality and interaction with other people so that it creates a sense that we're somehow safe and secure in our own little world while everything else out around us goes on but it's important for us to be able to engage in our world, to have a life, to be free and focused. And one of the things that prevents that is the level of trauma in society. I believe that trauma is one of those issues in the United States today that we just ignore and don't talk about because we're afraid of it, but it's having a huge impact on us. It's impacting our children in their schools 
It's impacting our relationships. It's impacting our inter interactions with others. Trauma is a significant issue for us. I live in the city of Atlanta in the state of Georgia in the United States. My neighborhood is a great neighborhood. I like where I live. My neighbors are friendly with each other. We get along well. We watch after each other. You know, we've had community parties and other kinds of social interaction. It's a great place to be. And in many ways, it's unusual because of the, the closeness that neighbors have with each other. Yet at the same time, I know that once or twice a month, I will hear gunshot fired in my neighborhood. Well, it may not be in my immediate neighborhood. It may be from the neighborhood over or from the major road that runs near our neighborhood. But I hear gunshot living in Atlanta, and many people do living in major cities in the United States. Most people simply ignore when gunshot happens. That's part of our desensitization to it and desensitization to trauma. But let's be honest. We shouldn't be hearing gunshot. I shouldn't be hearing gunshot in a nice neighborhood that's friendly and, and where people get along. That, that just doesn't fit. That's part of the trauma that we live with. My spiritual practice is very helpful for me in dealing with the traumatic incidents that happen around me. One of the things that spiritual practice does is help to keep me and anybody who has a regular spiritual practice grounded with a sense of reality and open to what's happening around us. It makes us aware and mindful and alert. That's a very important thing in terms of dealing with trauma. Spiritual practice also makes an individual better able to move with the flow. There becomes an awareness that nothing in life is permanent, that life is always changing and evolving. So that when we encounter something that's traumatic, we know that it's not forever, that there's always going to be something that comes next, that time passes and things change. And that's very important for the resolution of trauma and a traumatic event and a traumatic response. Spiritual practice opens us to be more compassionate and sensitive to others. So we're less likely to wall ourselves off and seclude and be distrustful of others, which is sort of a countermeasure to what happens when we're living around trauma and become distrustful of others. And spiritual practice keeps us open to the possibility of hope. In another video, Hope, a Practice for Life, I talk about the importance of hope. The hope gives us a sense that there's always the possibility of something good happening, no matter what the situation may be. So I think that's very important for us to stay open to hope in the midst of whatever dire circumstances we find ourselves. And it's important for us while embracing the possibility of hope and change, to focus on our ability to thrive and to live fully. In the video, Pandemic Living, Spirituality, Change, and Thriving, I talk about change and thriving, and thriving no matter what the circumstance may be. The need for our creativity to have a spirit that's open, and all of these things work as countermeasures to the experience of trauma. Fundamentally, I think our biggest problem around trauma is that we don't recognize it and talk about it. Remember my mentioning September 11th. One of the great things about September 11th was we talked about it. For years, everyone had stories to tell. Where were you on September 11th? What were you doing when the Twin Towers fell? And it was in the process of telling those stories that we were able to express 
the horror, the tension, the unreality of that trauma. We're not always able to do that among other issues. For instance, when it comes to mass shootings, we don't talk about that because when we do, we quickly move into political posturing over gun rights and gun ownership. Gun rights and gun ownership aren't about our experience of living in a society where guns have multiplied and what it means to live in a neighborhood where you hear gunshot. Talking about this is extremely important. And perhaps you're not sure how to talk about it, but you want to start engaging some of your friends, people that you care about. If you do, share this video with them and invite them to consider the role of trauma in their life and around them. And also leave some comments so we can have some discussion about trauma so that this can be a place where we explore issues related to trauma. And of course, subscribe, like this video, click the bell, and know that I really appreciate your taking the time to watch and listen to this video and to join me in coming to understand the impact of trauma in our society today. Thank you.